May our time together be filled with joy, reverence, and a deep sense of God's presence among us. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. You're thanking you always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, I just pray the Lord Jesus Christ is out front leading you throughout your day, throughout your life as we move forward in this year of our Lord 2024. And I do pray you've had a good week. I pray that everything has worked in your favor. And if you had some bad days, well, I hope you learned something because if you did learn something, it's not a bad day. So let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from Habakkuk 3.18. Habakkuk 3.18, which reads, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Amen. And we are definitely going to be joyful in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For he is done, is doing, and will always be doing great things for us if we just believe and just have hope. Just, just hang in there. I know many of you are going through something right now that is undescribable. But you know what, though? God's got a response. Just have hope. And we're going to pray for you right now. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather, whether we're watching online or listening to this show right now, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. We thank you for your steadfast love and faithfulness, which sustains us in every season of life. Even in the midst of challenges and uncertainties, help us to find the joy and strength in you. As Habakkuk declared, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Lord, may your word resonate deeply within us, reminding us of your constant presence and your grace. Grant us the wisdom to trust in your sovereign plan, knowing that you are always working for our good. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And may our time with you always rise like incense before your throne, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We ask this, we offer this, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, so our topic today is avoiding obstacles to your blessings. Three effective strategies. Now, I'm co of course, there are more effective strategies out there, but we only got but so much time. So we're going to go to three effective strategies. And our text comes from 2 Kings 5, 8 through 14. 2 Kings 5, 8 through 14 reads as follows. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the men come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horse and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abna and Phapar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants, servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. We thank you for your word, the lessons we can grab from it every day, every hour, every minute. Now, Lord, help us dive into your word effectively. Help us see the lessons here in this story, this text, and the lessons learned that we can help us avoid some things that Naaman went, Naaman went through. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Avoiding obstacles to your blessings. Three effective strategies. Today, I want to ask you the question, how do you receive God's blessing? It's an interesting question nonetheless, because I'm not asking, do you pray for God's blessing, but how do you receive them? Through my walks with Jesus in ministry, I've witnessed many people who do not pick up the blessings that God sends down. And you're probably confused at this point about how that could happen. Who would pray for something and then when God delivers it, decide to not take delivery of it? The whole process sounds very counterproductive. Maybe you know a situation like this where someone has prayed for something for so long and then when finally when God responds at the time of his choosing, for whatever reason, they don't, they don't pick it up. But there are reasons, though. We're going to dive into that. The situation is this. You're wrestling with something. It's something that has been determined through your faith in Christ that if he doesn't send a solution, you are going to sink. Picture the scenario here. You're going to be in a situation. Problems are going to occur and grow worse. Maybe you've been wrestling with this thing you've been praying for for a while. You've had to operate in it, you've had to live in it, eat in it, sleep in it. Whatever the case is, it's your current status. And this is the, the prayer you're praying to receive the blessing for. This is the case we find in 2 Kings 5, where we meet a military man named Naaman. We get a quick profile of him in verse 1, which reads, Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Here's the situation. Now, we don't know if Naaman was a praying man or not, but what we do know is his current status, the one that he lived in, he operated in, was he had leprosy. He did all this, he had leprosy. Verses 2 to 3 tells us how he had brought back a young Israelite girl who proclaimed to the mistress that if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Now that we know he came about his destination, how he came about his destination he faces, uh, now there's some confusion from king to king. Scroll down to verse 6, which reads, the letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. That is not what the little girl said. Nonetheless, whisper rally begins, and some confusion uh, takes hold at that point. This upsets the king of Israel, because someone out there thinks he's God when he knows he's not, and in fact he thinks he's being picked on. And in today's language, he thinks he's being trolled. So by the time we get to verse 8, Elisha has got word the king has tore his robes and solves the problem by sending word which said, Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know there is a prophet in Israel. Now that gives us the background of how we got here. Now let's get to where the obstacles come into play and the strategies we gain from Naaman's mistakes. The first one is this. Avoid allowing imagination and emotions to get in the way of how you want to receive your blessing. Scripture says in verses 11 through 12, but Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Amnon and Fapar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them instead of being cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Now, here's the thing. Go back to verses 9 and 10 real quick. He was given instruction. So Naaman went to his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Basic instructions. Here's your solution. Here is where you can finally solve this problem. Here is now where you can receive your blessing. 
But apparently that was not good enough. Now the question is why? Because something was going on in that head of his. Avoid allowing your imaginations and emotions of how you want to receive your blessing get in the way of receiving your blessing. Scripture says in verses 11, 12, we've already read that, he went away angry and he's talking about other rivers that are much better and beautiful and you know, so he, he starts angry and then it turns into a rage. He works, see, he gets himself worked up about what is happening right now. Don't run past this. He had a vision of how this story was going to go down and got mad when the solution did not match what he had in his mind. And when God sends us blessings and the pathway to receiving the blessing doesn't match our vision of how this was supposed to go down, people get angry with God. In our world, some would think, now what do I put on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? I can't put this simple response. It's not elaborate enough. It's not photo worthy. This won't get likes and reshares. No extra followers. I want this to be super holy when God has put you in the place to receive your blessing. And guess what? God's releasing power remained dormant. Once again, I'm going to keep you up to speed here. During this rant and rave that he did, he still got leprosy. <laughs> All right, let's be real. He still has leprosy. Nothing has changed in his status of the reason why he went there in the first place. The instructions never changed. Verse 10, one more time. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Did you catch that he was also mad about where to receive the blessing? He rants about how he wants to receive it, and then he rants about he rants about where to receive it. Are not Abna and Farpar, verse 12, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. He had set the scene completely on what he wanted God to do when he blessed him. To the point that when he finally gets an answer on how to solve his problem, he can't receive the blessing because it did not come the way he had envisioned it. Here's how he will receive the blessing. Here's where he will receive the blessing. And none of that panned out. And as a reminder, he's still a leper. Let's be clear. This isn't God helps those who help themselves here. No. God, through the prophet Elijah, has provided a supernatural solution on earth for this man, and he's mad about everything and not joyful about the one thing. And what is that one thing? He has access to the power of God to receive the blessing of healing from leprosy. Who, who, who needs access right now to, to God's power? Who needs access right now to God's unchanging hand in your hand who needs the access you see we got a lot of people out there that have the access that has been given the access to get their problem solved but they want it done their way and as a result the access goes wasted blessings are just hanging around on the grounds on earth unwrapped un, uh, still packaged up waiting to be used and utilized and yet they go dormant because for whatever reason, it did not match how they had seen it happening. It didn't give a story. It didn't give them anything to talk about, so to speak. You better get, you better get your mind right. You, you better get focused because you're the one going through it, not me. Not the listeners. You're, you're out there right now. You're the one going through what you're going through right now. And the reason why you're still going through it is because you have not received the blessing that God has given you because it did not come the way you wanted it to come. 
So now you're sitting there with your arms folded, angry at God and angry at everybody else and ain't got nothing to do with your situation when you should have simply followed the instructions that God sent to whoever it was or whatever event or whatever situation he did to manifest your answer to your problem. Here's something else I want you to look at. Uh, strategy number two, avoid enablers, embrace disablers. Avoid the enablers, embrace the disablers. What do I mean? Scripture says, verse 13, Naaman's servant, servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? Now here are people who are obviously close to Naaman beyond just being servants. They're calling him father. But they were also men of reason who cared. Here you are at the place where God's about to bless you and you're mad about how you're receiving the blessing and watching you go through your fit are people who care about you, have been on the journey with you, and don't come with additional complaints but a voice of reason. I'm sure there are blessings around you right now just waiting to be unpacked from a prayer you prayed and you lost track and you have the wrong people around you to keep you on track, and that includes me too. So many times I've prayed for about things and got my feelings never realizing this is what I prayed for. And I thank God every day for godly friends who would remind me of the request and get me back in perspective to push forward and receive my blessing. A disabler is going to dismantle your argument and provide some common sense. You know, we don't have a lot of that no more in this world. <laughs> Very scarce. You see people around someone providing a voice of reason and common sense. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ right now that if you are ever going through something, you do not have people enabling your behavior, enabling your poor response, enabling your lack of faith, enabling when you want to turn to the bottle turn to the weed, turn to the clubs, turn to a poor life. They're saying, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's... Those are not friends. Those are not the friends you want around you because they're broken too. And then now you enter a broken system and now all y'all broken and you think you're operating correctly. You think you're, you're getting better and you think, you think, you think. What about what, what, what God thinks? Have you considered that? Fall on your knees right now and pray. Pray that the Lord puts you around people who are going to disable that destructive behavior known as sin, that are going to, to disable your lack of faith, disable your, your groaning, disable everything that is keeping you from your blessing, because that's what's happening. The, the more you get angry, the more emotion that's involved in your response to, response to God from the negative sense, the more separated you're going to be from your blessing. The blessing is here, and you were here about to pick it up, unwrap it, utilize it, thank you, Lord, and keep it moving. But because things you had in your mind is not matching up with your reality with God, you get angrier, and you get angrier, and then you almost confuse yourself. Have you seen these people? They literally confuse themselves. They get lost in that philosophical mumbo jumbo that the blessing remains here. They get further away from the blessing God has delivered through a person, place, or thing, and they still complain about their status. Well, the blessing is here. Why don't you go, you know, God has, has sent a response. Well, I don't want to go through all that. Okay, but you're still in your status. You're you're still there. It's so confusing. I know you're laughing right now thinking to yourself, yeah, I know people like this. It might be you. But but guess what, though? God has, has done his part. <laughs> Go get your blessing. Stop complaining. Shut your mouth. Go get your blessing. He's shown you the path. He's put a supporting cast around you. Hopefully they are disablers. They're going to disable the negativity. They're going to do disable distractions. They're going to disable everything that's going to help you lose focus. They're going to dis disable all of that. Those are good friends because they've been on this journey with you to get healed, to get to that breakthrough y'all all talk about all the time. 
I hope you got some disablers around you, not folks that are going to pat you on the head and continuously enable your poor behavior or your poor response to God's instructions. How much more then when he tells you wash and be cleansed? Here these men provided a simple counterpoint. Common sense. Either way, you would have still had to do this, right? So just go do it. And sometimes you just got to say what needs to be said to people. You see, come so close to receiving their blessing and getting their feelings about how they have to receive it. Sometimes you got to be blunt. Sometimes you just got to get to the point. Sometimes you just got to say what needs to be said. These guys are servants of Naaman. I'm sure somewhere, if I'm a servant to someone, I might be a little nervous. I might be a little like, okay, well, you know, I don't want, I, I don't want to say it, but it needs to be said, you know, and, but, but because of the relationship they had with Naaman, it was okay for them to say, keep friends like that around you who are close enough to you to let you know, hey, dude, what are you doing? Hey girl, what are you doing? You need people like that around you. And how do we know this brought back perspective? Look at verse 14. So he went down, stop right there. There was nothing said after that. <laughs> did, you, did you catch that? Did you catch that? The servant spoke. He did not respond back to the servants. He just went and began to do it. He went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. A disabler will give you an answer that bears no response because it's going to make too much sense. It's going to make so much sense that you will have nothing to say to it. I'll give you an example. I was at, uh, when I was going to seminary, uh, my first of two seminaries I went to, uh, the first one I didn't have a really good experience at. Uh, it was a professor, you know, regular college stuff. If, for all my college grads out there, you know the tour. There's always that one professor that just has to make his mark in spreading some negativity and making you work for it harder. And then it got to a point that I practically changed from getting my Master's of Divinity to moving that plan to another seminary. So before I leave, my academic advisor has said, hey, um, you know, you don't have to leave here that way. You don't have to leave here with work incomplete. You qualify for a massive arts degree. The only thing you have to do is sign your name on the paper and you've got that master's degree all wrapped up in the bow, ready to go. I get off the phone, we're in the car and I'm talking to my wife about this and how insulted I am that you know, for whatever reason, I thought that was like a consolation prize or something. It's a whole master's degree. And my wife was like, so if you do this, you'll have your master's of arts with the concentration in New Testament studies. And I said, yeah. And you can still go back to your home seminary and where my father and grandfathers had gone to, basically. And you can still work on getting your MDiv, correct? And I said, yeah. She said, so you would have two master's degrees. I said, yes, Wh what are you upset about? And at that moment, I had nothing else to say. <laughs> but this is what happens when you let emotions get in the way of you and God's blessing. This is what happens even to me, 15 years in ministry plus, and even I'm making, about to make mistakes. But I had somebody around me, though, that brings that perspective back. And thank God for you need someone to bring you back in perspective. So what happens? I sign the paperwork. I go graduate. I go to my family seminary in Virginia. I go there. I complete a master's divinity degree. I graduate. And here I am. God is good. But you got to pay attention and stay focused. Here are where we are. Avoid allowing your imaginations and emotions of how you want to receive your blessing get in the way of you receiving your blessing. Avoid enablers. Embrace disablers. And finally, avoid missing God's blessing. Trust and receive it. I want to keep you with the state of Naaman's condition through this argument, the voice of reason. Naaman is still a leper. Nothing has changed but the attitude. 
So when he finally stops talking and starts doing, we read in the last part of verse 14, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Don't miss God's blessing worrying about insignificant junk. That is what it is. Get out of your feelings. People are watching. You began this journey to solve a problem, and now you let the devil get into the details because that's what Satan wants you to do, get in your feelings and not in your faith. And there's ever a time to push the reason to why we come together as a body of believers, it's here. Here's a closing thought. Hebrews 10, 22-25. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who was promised is faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another on toward lo love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all more as you see the day approaching. If you're on the journey to receive God's blessing, I want you to hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. He got you this far. Don't let your feelings be your failure and your determination to see your way to the blessing be your downfall. And in the midst of this, when you see your brother or sister going down the pathway of feeling or thinking the wrong thing about what God is doing for them, help them remember what they prayed for and fully live out the instructions of what God has told them to do to receive their blessing. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And if you're in that process of losing focus, contact us at get-prayer.com. Get get-prayer.com. Submit your requests. We will respond. We will get back with you. And we would love to talk to you about staying focused to receive your blessing and avoiding these obstacles Damon went through. So until next time, May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we will see you next week. You take care.